Okay, last question, globalism. We keep hearing from the Prime Minister, ministers, officials in government that this is a global recession all the time. Now, some would say rather unfairly, people are asking whether the Prime Minister should apologise for the recession. Now, the question everybody asks is, yes, there is a recession. It happened on the Prime Minister's watch. There's no question about that. Mm. But I think a lot of people want to know is, what is it that we could have done, or the UK government could have done, in this global world that we live in, to actually stop the recession happening? I mean, could they have said to our banks, actually, don't lend to anybody outside the United Kingdom. Don't lend to anybody without uh, a UK passport. Just lend in the United Kingdom for the last 15 years. Was that a realistic option to us? If we cut ourselves off from the international economy and hide, shelter our uh, economy here in the United Kingdom, yeah, we will be exposed to less risk in the world, but we'll also be sheltered from the rewards as well from that international economy. We have to do business in the global economy. That's where our markets are. That's where our, that's where our business opportunities are. The idea that we can sort of simply sort of bury our heads in the sand and just stay at home and, and remain as prosperous in the future as we have been in the past uh, is, I'm afraid, just ridiculous. You know, it, 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 it is just ridiculous because we would be sh you know, cutting ourselves off precisely from those opportunities that are going to uh, feed our, 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 our businesses and enable them to grow in the future. But the point I make to people when they ask me about this is this. Look, if this were some ordinary recession of the sort we've had before, rather than an almighty great international financial crisis in our banks, then we might have something to apologize for. And if it were only taking place in this country and not around the world, then probably some blame would attach to ourselves here. But neither of these things are true. This is no ordinary recession, and it's not British, it's international. Now, what I think is more important to ask in this situation is, you know, not whose scalp are we going to have uh, 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 here to uh, to attach the blame to uh, for what's uh, uh, gone wrong, although there will be important questions to ask about how you know, our banking regulation uh, uh, has worked not just in this country but internationally because these flows of capital and lending and finance go across uh, uh, national borders all around the uh, uh, country, uh, all around the world, rapidly, all the time. So you know, you could say, well, we could have the best regulation in the world in this country, but if it's not joined up with what everyone else is doing, then we're going to be no further forward in, in underpinning the international financial system with standards, with conditions, with guarantees and protection that only an international approach to regulation uh, will bring. And that, of course, is exactly the point uh, of the G20 meeting that's going to take place in London at the beginning of April. I mean, this is the, like the sort of new steering committee of the global economy uh, all these countries. It's being uh, driven, its agenda, its organization, uh, the objectives of the meeting and what we hope to move forward as a result of it by Britain. And by the way, instead of people just talking down our country the whole time and saying, you know, well, we should have done more or we can't do this or we're useless at the other, why don't people take a pride in our country and say, God, who's giving the lead here internationally? It's Britain. Who's chairing the G20 meeting at the beginning of April? It's Britain. Who's formulating the agenda here that's providing leadership for the rest of the world? Actually, great, it's Britain, and take a pride in what we're doing. And this has to go part and parcel with something which is equally important, and that's Britain fighting back against this recession. Rather than talking ourselves down the whole time, opening our newspapers and seeing endless doom and gloom and disaster every time uh, we're, we're exposed to some sort of fresh sort of ghastly story about what's happening here, there, or, or, or somewhere else. Let's look at some of the good news. Let's look at what businesses are doing to withstand the pressures uh, of this uh, uh, recession so that they not only survive what we're going through now, but enable themselves to thrive in the future. That's what we should be focused on, and that's why Britain's got to fight back and think a dance like more positively than some people would like us to do. Well, I've publicly gone out and said, this is possibly the most exciting working period of my life. Do you feel the same? It's certainly a challenge. And I do feel exactly the same. It's nice to be here, it's nice to be doing this job, and it's nice to be working uh, with British business uh, in doing so. We've got a heck of a lot 
on our plate to get through uh, what we're being exposed to at the moment. But we can, we will, and if we work together as a nation, we'll have a very strong future. Not only as the upturn begins, uh, but beyond the upturn, we've got to put the conditions in place that are going to enable us to make and pay our living in many, many different ways in coming uh, decades. That means thinking now, investing now, joining up our policies now, making sure that new business ideas and people and entrepreneurs have that backing that they're entitled to expect from their government now. That's what we're doing. Uh, so survive now, thrive later. Well, Manderson, thank you very much.